What's going on guys? I hope everyone's having a great day and today I'm going to be ranking all the Halloween films including the new kid on the block Halloween ends. So as you can see it's a different uh, change of pace. I actually am outside in my backyard way way in my backyard. Uh, my backyard goes back a lot. Um, sat out here because it's a nice cool autumn day and I guess I kind of wanted to I guess capture that feeling of autumn when we're talking about Halloween. So I thought that it would be very appropriate to do it outside while well, it's nice. Um, if you hear either trucks flying 80 by my house, uh, big diesel F-350s, or you hear um, fucking cracking noises, that's usually rednecks and big trucks flying 80 by my house, or people are out shooting their guns. Uh, joys of living in the South, even though gun ownership's actually fine with me and I don't care if you don't like that uh, but anyway let's go ahead and get into it dead last it's gonna be from worst to best dead last Halloween kills this movie for Christ's sakes this movie was dead last I think since the second time I watched third time I watched it I realized that this movie is a complete dumpster fire um, people there were people trying to hype this movie up saying it was a masterpiece i'm sorry if i'm a little crooked i'm just kind of sat on an angle here on a hill uh people saying this is a masterpiece and that this is david gordon green's dark knight this is his empire strikes back no i would never in a million years throw this on the same shelf as the dark knight or the empire strikes back never in a million years hence why this is at the bottom of the franchise for me this is the lowest of the low in the halloween franchise i can't stand this movie it's poorly acted poorly directed has a couple good kills in it uh, michael myers is impressive but that's really it with this movie there's nothing else that's impressive about this film so dead last Coming in second to last, Halloween 2018. This movie, I just, I wanted to love this movie. I was on the hype train. We, I think we all were. You guys remember back in 2018 how, before this movie came out, how on the hype train I was for this film. Did a trailer reaction, everything. Man, I was just so happy that we were getting Michael Myers back. And, man, I wish... That I, I wish that this was my favorite sequel. That's how much I wanted to love this movie. And it just ended up not being good. Once again, Michael Myers is great. James Jude Courtney is a menace. I love James Jude Courtney as Michael Myers. But just the, everything that surrounds it is awful. But other than Jamie Lee Curtis, the script is, is just shit in this movie. Um, there's just a lot of lazy, lazy writing in this damn movie. Um, I just just not a fan of Halloween 2018 I've tried it so many times all right moving on to Halloween resurrection not uh, I, this used to be my worst in the franchise it's not even close to the worst in the franchise anymore but there's some fun moments in this movie this movie's fun okay I actually sometimes have fun with this movie uh, the first 15 minutes, I actually liked the first 15 minutes. Um, it wasn't the best send-off for Laurie Strode at all. But the first 15 minutes is fun. Then we just, it kind of drags in the middle, and then it picks up. But the biggest sin that this thing commits is making fun of Michael Myers. And there's another film in this franchise that does this that's coming up. A uh, big, 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 big cardinal sin. But at the same time, I can appreciate Jamie Lee coming back again, even though she really obviously didn't want to. The Myers house looks like the Myers house. The mask. I really like the mask. I really like the portrayal of Michael Myers by Brad Laurie in this movie. I really like Brad Laurie. I think he's a, a great Michael Myers. Just we get some cool kills here and there, but this is kind of just a lazy, lazy sequel. I enjoy it more than 2018 and kills, hands down. All right, now this is one I don't have because it's not out on DVD yet, but it's the new kid on the block, Halloween Ends. I don't hate Halloween Ends. I definitely see a lot of what's wrong with the movie that people are saying. Uh, once again, they kind of emasculate Michael Myers, and I'm not cool with that at all. But, you know, 
I do appreciate that they tried something new and different. Um, there's another film in this franchise that's a little higher up that tries something new and different. Actually, two that try something new and different, and they work a mu they work much, much better. Um, I really liked the Corey Cunningham character. I really, really, really liked the Corey Cunningham character, and I liked the romance. What I didn't like was, man, just the pacing. I didn't, I, 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 I said that the pacing wasn't an issue the first time I watched it, but then when I watched it a couple more times, the pacing really stuck out, stuck out to me. It does feel, I don't know if it was just the mood I was in or not, because when I, when I saw it for the first time, it didn't feel like it took all that long to get to the Michael Myers stuff, but then the, a few other times I watched it, it's like, man, it's really dragging. And I don't know, maybe it's just the mood I was in. Um, this definitely would have been higher up on my list, but um, Halloween Ends is my, probably my favorite in the new trilogy. Uh, there's more rewatchability to Halloween Ends than there is for Kills in 2018. I probably won't ever touch Kills or 2018 again, unless I'm marathoning the whole series. But I will never go out of my way to pull 2018 or Kills off the shelf. But Halloween Ends, there might be, there might come a time where I'm in the mood to watch it every once in a while and just watch it. But uh, yeah, uh, like I said, they tried something new. I appreciate that. But I don't think this was the time and place. Like, there's a time and place to be trying out new stuff. And I don't think that this was the time and place to be fiddle-fucking around with new shit. But that's just me. All right, we got Rob Zombie's Halloween. I, when I did this watch-along with Ryan from Everyday, with, uh, Everyday Horror, this movie jumped a great amount on my list. This used to be right in between 2018 and Kills. Now it has jumped far up. Um, Michael Myers in this movie, I think this might be one of my favorite, might now might one of my favorite, uh, portrayals of Michael Myers by, uh, Tyler Mayne, the former WCW wrestler. He also played, uh, Sabretooth in the X-Men films. Um, he is just, he's a different type of Michael Myers. He's a different, a different version of Michael Myers and he's brutal. He's just so the things that he he does in this movie are just so they look painful to people um the big butcher knife man it's just this michael myers used to scare me when i was a kid this version of michael myers i used to watch every time the trailer for this movie came on and the halloween 2 trailer rob zombie's halloween 2 trailer god damn i had nightmares just from the trailer it wasn't i watched i ended up watching the movies and i was not all that scared during them but i think that this if you want like an alternative to just like he's the boogeyman and he is this force of evil if you want a more character study type of film into the psychology of michael myers this is a more humanized realistic take on michael and sometimes i get in the mood for that it's like i wonder what would what it would be like if Michael was more realistic essentially it's more of a real this Rob Zombie these two, the Rob Zombie duology is a more realistic more emotional take on Halloween than your traditional Halloween timeline I get timelines rather because goddamn there's quite a few of them all right moving on Halloween the curse of Michael Myers uh you know I know this is a shitty movie I know this is like a really 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 bad movie but I have fun with this movie uh, more so the producer's cut than the theatrical cut. Um, this is the theatrical cut. I don't have the producer's cut. Um, I know there's the DVD that's a bootleg of it, but I don't want that fucking thing. Um, I, I really, I think what makes this movie so high up on my list is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is just, it's on point in this movie. It, this feels not in terms of story and quality, but in terms of tone. This feels closest to the original film since Halloween 2. And I really, really appreciate it a lot. Now, is the storyline just absolutely awful? Yeah, it's, the storyline's a mess, but it's still a fun watch. Both cuts can be fun to watch. If you want the more grotesque, gruesome, violent, dark film, watch the theatrical cut. If you want a more fleshed out film, and a more atmosphere-based film. Watch the producer's cut. What is that? That's a uh, that's a biplane or something. 
Yeah, there's a little small commercial airport down the street. Um, I gotta hear that all day. <laughs> that you have like, and then you have the um, the National Guard base out this way. You got Blackhawks flying over all the time. It's it, it can get really annoying. Um, but yeah, um, definitely uh, both films feel incomplete. I definitely prefer the producer's cut, but you know, I this represents both. This is gonna represent both. All right, this is one that's jumped in a great abundance here. Um, man, you guys are gonna love me for this. Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This was actually my least favorite in the franchise for a long time. Since watching it again on this marathon that I did, I've really grown to appreciate Halloween 5, The uh, Curse of Earth, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This is a really atmospheric film. Really, really atmospheric film. Um, it just has this really dark, gothic type of tone to it, I guess is the way to put it. I shouldn't say gothic. I, I guess the mansion kind of makes it feel gothic, which that, that that's fucking stupid. That, that's not the fucking Myers house. I'm sorry. But uh, some of the kills are pretty good in this one, too. Um, I actually, the mask has grown on me. I actually said that in my video I did like a year ago about f like five or ten nice things I did uh, said about Halloween 5. The, I, I, the mask has grown on me. That's true. The mask really has grown on me. I actually think that this is a fun Halloween movie. I'm starting to warm up to all the films, minus the Blumhouse films. Um, all the other films that I said I didn't like in the past, I'm really starting to warm up to a lot of them. And this is definitely one that I've warmed up to quite a bit. So yeah, Halloween 5. All right, I can't help but not hide my love for this film. This film has grown on me so so much over the years and I finally get the film I finally get get what makes this movie unique and special to a lot of the people that defend this film Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 the theatrical cut I also own the unrated cut but I'm using the theatrical cut because I think this is the superior cut because Michael Myers doesn't scream Die! at the end um I think this is probably one of the most I think violent, visceral, theatrically released films I've ever seen. And it's not true to the Halloween formula. And you have to really separate the Rob Zombie film, films from the original timeline to appreciate this. And some people say this is the worst in the franchise. People are starting to look more positive on this film now that Halloween ends is about which I guess that's kind of a good thing. Cause I don't think this movie's bad at all. I actually think this is kind of a good movie. Uh, a lot of people say they don't like Michael Myers being uh, a hobo or whatever they complain about. The Halloween fans are always complaining about shit. Um, I'm trying to complain less about stuff, and I'm trying to just have fun and enjoy things for what they are. Um, I'm trying not to complain and bitch and moan about stuff and just enjoy it for what it is. And Michael Myers is not in his traditional trench coat. He's or in his uh, coveralls. He's in a trench coat. Uh, his mask is decaying and it's ripping. Um, he's having visions. These are things that I would expect from an insane person who has fallen off the radar. He wouldn't be. He where? Where is he gonna sleep? You know where? What's he gonna eat? He kills a dog. Oh, we shouldn't see that. What's he gonna eat? He's going to eat raw animal. He's not going to fucking go to fucking Food Lion and buy $100 worth of groceries. And, what, I mean, what's he going to do as far as sleeping arrangements are concerned? He's not going to call up a buddy and say, hey, you want to be roommates somewhere? And, I mean, he's got he's a, he's a human in this timeline. He has to stay warm. Of course, he's going to kill somebody and steal their trench coat. He carries around a big rusty Bowie knife. This movie's just dark and brutal and... It has it actually has a good storyline to it. It's about trauma and suffering, and I think that this movie does it a lot better than Halloween 2018 does. Halloween 2018 feels just so shallow and bare bones and almost like they were making a cash grab film. This actually feels like there's some reality to this, like this could actually happen. Um, Lori's suffering in this movie. She is deeply suffering in this movie. Whereas in Halloween 2018, she's 
fucking for 40 years built a fucking this big elaborate trap and fucking turned into Sarah Connor and bought hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of guns like come on it's so stupid but this is not stupid to me but, uh, yeah I have finally come around to liking Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 now speaking of Halloween 2 we've got the original Halloween 2 uh, you know, I did a video on why I don't like Halloween 2, but upon rewatch, I was like, yeah, I mean, they kind of demystify the original film. Um, I know I was kind of defending Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, but I've separated that Michael Myers from this Michael Myers. And the movie is actually a lot more atmospheric than I thought it was. And I mean, it's fun. It's got some good kills. It's just not quite as good as the original. Um, I don't know. It's just there's a lot of downtime in this movie where there's not really much happening, especially in the middle. Kind of like Halloween Kills, except this movie's actually okay. Um, just, it's not my favorite sequel. But it's not a movie that I hate. It's a movie that I can say I can have fun with it. I, I love the mask. I, I just wish it sat just like, uh... I know Dick Warlock had a more round-shaped face where Nick Castle had an oval-shaped face, but, uh, you know, that would have kind of helped and had not had uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in that awful, awful wig. But overall, it's fine. It's good enough. I enjoy it more than I did over the last year or two. All right. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I uh, really enjoy this movie uh, more than I thought I did. Um... This feels really close to the original Halloween film. Very, 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 very close to the original film uh, in terms of atmosphere and stuff. And that's really honestly what I look for in Halloween films. If you really have been paying attention throughout this ranking list, the least atmospheric film, Kills, is at the bottom. And the more higher up you go, the more atmospheric they are. And... That's kind of what I look for in a Halloween film. And they, they knock it out of the park in Halloween 4 uh, as, in terms of atmosphere. Uh, that opening opening scene alone, I think, is probably the best opening. The second best opening, not, not close to the original. But the second best opening in the entire franchise. It's just so atmospheric and so chilling and so haunting that I would put this movie this high up just based on that. Are there some issues with the movie? Yeah, the mask, but really, that's really my only issue with Halloween 4. I uh, think it's a fun movie. A fun, fun movie. All right, I think this is the best out of the Michael Myers uh, sequels. Halloween H2O. Mainly just because I think they get Laurie right in this movie, where 2018 kind of just shits all over the character of Laurie Strode. This Laurie feels more believable. There's got to be some believability. Jeez, dude. Like, I mean, that guy's flying. Holy shit. Jesus. I'm not going to be surprised if he goes down there and I just hear a big... <sighs> just, wow, that dude was fucking hauling ass. Anyway, um, they get Lori right in this movie. Um, I believe that she would move out of Haddonfield across the other side of the fucking country knowing that this fucking maniac is coming after her more believable than her staying at Haddonfield and building this, like I said, big elaborate trap expecting him to escape exactly 40 years later like, come on, it's so dumb but this feels more believable mask, not the best mask in the world, uh, not by any means but it's good, this is actually a good movie, good, it's fine I enjoy the movie quite a bit just based on a lot of the stuff that I just said all right, best sequel in the franchise, Halloween season of the, Halloween three seasons of, season of the witch. Excuse me. You want to talk about atmosphere, man? Holy fuck, this is one atmospheric movie, and this movie's fucking ridiculous. The concept is fucking ridiculous, but it's just so awesome. This greedy, corporate, money-hungry, evil man makes these masks that kills fucking children. It's so good. This movie is. Um, it's just, that's a perfect concept for a fucking horror movie. And this is what I think John Carpenter wanted for the franchise after the first film. So, just based on that, it's just such a good movie. And last but not least, the original 1978 classic, 
I've pretty much said everything I can say about this film. It's just, it's the immortal classic Halloween. It's immortal. There's nothing negative I can say about it. Yeah, there's little areas here and there that are a little sketchy, but on a uh, low budget film made back in the late 70s, uh, you know, there's audio, there's an audio issue in the scene where Annie's getting strangled in the car. Audio issue there, it's not really a big deal. This movie is one of the most atmospheric films I've ever seen. Um, Michael Myers is probably the most terrifying slasher villain. He's just such a creepy, creepy individual, and he has haunted my nightmares since I was a kid. Um, Dr. Loomis, uh, Dr. Loomis, Donald Pleasant's just knockout performance. He carries one, two, four, five, and six. He carries those films. Those films are worth are worth uh, watching just for Donald Pleasance. Even my friend Dylan agrees with me. He, he said that, that they're worth those are worth watching just because of him. But this is where it all started. This movie, along with uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, to me, are Michael Myers and Leatherface, to me, are the godfathers of slasher villains. And, you know, it even made me upset in Halloween ends when they finally killed Michael Myers. Like, I wanted him to die, but it was still just very upsetting to see is that we were seeing the death of one of the all-time greats of this, of this genre. And it all started here with Michael Myers. And just like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre started all in 1974, uh, which I think is one of the greatest horror movies ever made. But this is probably a close second to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, yeah, um... Yeah, that. I just wanted to do this ranking basically just to say thank you to Michael Myers for terrorizing me throughout my entire childhood. Um, it was really sad to see Michael Myers go the way he did. I kind of thought the final fight should have been a little longer, but uh, this is kind of my thank you to Michael, the character of Michael Myers. I know I'm talking to a fictional character, but you know what? You get what I'm doing here. Just a big thank you to him for terrorizing me and... Uh, just yeah thank you michael myers for everything thank you for all the ups and downs of this franchise just i mean we watched one of the all-time greats die and hope i don't know maybe they'll come do like a, a halloween 4 sequel or something that'd be kind of cool to see and get daniel harris back i'd be on board with that more than i would with the blumhouse trilogy but it is what it is so i hope you guys like my ranking i'm sure i'm gonna have a couple people get mad in the comments and uh I mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> sorry if you don't like it. Uh, I'm not going to change my ranking just because some idiot on the internet. <laughs> not going to do it. So I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Peace.